for many of you who are starting your locks, and I must admit I was one of you two when I first started my locks. When you see how your locks look when they're first installed, it's hard for you to believe that one day it's going to look like a lock. You know what I mean? Like, how is this twist going to turn into a lock? Like, how is that possible? How is that physically possible? You know what I mean? Um, you know there's many ways to start locks. There's many ways to install your locks. Um, one way that you can really see it becoming a lock is when you b back home. You know, basically that's best when you take your take your strand or your section and comb it upwards towards your roots. That tangles your hair, so you can see how that can become a lock. Um, I recently learned about a method where you make a braid and then you fuzz it up in your fingers and then you wrap the fuzz around. I can see that looking like a lock, but a twist, a two strand twist or a comb coil, how does that look like a lock one day? I can't really explain it in a little word. It's so hard to understand and I, I get it, I get it. I work with fourth and fifth graders right now. It's a little difficult because I'm used to working with older kids. I, I was in the field of college access for such a long time and basically what that is is helping with the college application, college matriculation process. Basically I'm helping kids get into college and helping them stay in college. College access and college success. So I'm used to dealing with 18 year olds, 19, 20 year olds, and I'm only 23 so I can talk to them easily and they understand me easily. I can use my big words and they get it, you know? So, but right now I'm working with 4th and 5th graders, so 9 and 10 year olds and you know they're so curious about my hair and I'm trying to, I was trying to explain this to them yesterday. I was helping them with their homework but the conversation just shifted. They were just so engulfed in my hair and the conversation changed and I just couldn't let them go on with their lives wondering so I had to like take a break from the homework and <laughs> try to school them a little bit and I understand this is it was really hard for them to get it um basically how I the way I put it is that basically when you twist and comb kinky hair textured hair kinky textured hair eventually it mats up and tangles up and it, when you wash it and add water to it, it helps it kink up and tangle up together to form locks. One of my students was like, Miss Felix, you did that on purpose? <sighs> so I kind of just want to show you up close, for, for those of you who've never seen locks up close, um, or maybe you've never... You know, or if you don't really understand it, I wanted to show you up close so you can get a better understanding of my locks at least. But you know, my locks are pretty typical in my opinion. My hair texture is pretty common among black people. I believe it will be categorized as 4A, 4B, you know, which is pretty tight coils. So, come. Yeah, come, come. Okay. Now I know my hair has been dyed a million times, that's why it looks so multicolored. I will be dyeing it again soon because I kind of want a more uniform color. And the way locks work is they hold in hairs that would normally shed. So. That's why locks or people with locks tend to look like they have a lot more hair than everyone else because we kind of do because our hair doesn't shed like everyone else's. Well, it sheds like everyone else's, but we keep it because it stays in our lock and it tangles within the lock. Though no two locks are quite the same, these two are pretty close. And this is my ideal lock size. I prefer a thicker lock, but not too thick. I do have thinner locks on my head, which I chose to combine. For instance, these. This is two locks, but this is combined to, to make one lock. And as you can see, it's still pretty thin. So our hair across our scalp has different consistency 
throughout. Therefore, you cannot really guarantee that all of your locks will come out to be the same size. So keep that into consideration if you decide to start on your lock journey. Keep that in mind. Over time, it locks up even tighter and tighter. So in the beginning of your journey, maybe your locks are pretty thick. But that doesn't mean that a few years down the line, it won't thin out. Trust me, I know from experience. I know firsthand. Especially if you are big on maintenance. If you retwist often or style often, your locks will get thinner. They may, ne they may not necessarily thin out like to the point where they break, but they will get smaller, more compact. So these are my locks in all this faded glory. I will be coloring soon. If you have any color recommendations, leave them below, please. My birthday is March 6th. I think I want to color it before my birthday, like I did last year when I went from red to blonde. When I went from blonde to red, that's what I mean. Yeah, so for those who don't get it, locks or dreads or whatever you prefer to call them, it's natural hair. It is our natural hair. It is not weave. That is faux locks. That's not what this is here. This is natural hair that has been twisted and left alone and has been washed and styled and dyed and left alone. That is how locks form. You leave them alone and they mat together. They tangle up. They mat. They basically marry into each other and become one. Here is my root and basically if I were to retwist them, which I will be doing later on when I wash them later, I would do this with wet hair, maybe apply some gel if I want to, and twist it clockwise. Oh, I'll just do it a little bit. It's not good to do this with, on dry hair, so I'll just do a little. So over time, a comb coil, which is pretty much looks like this, which I just twisted, will end up looking like this. It's not too hard to believe, right? So I just wanted to explain my locks really briefly and explain how locks work really briefly so even the clueless can get it. Okay? Thanks for watching. Love Light Locks.